Okay, just get my desoldering tool uh, back up and running. Let's just zoom out a little bit. So, just on the bottom, the back piece just <laughs> pops off. Uh, again, as with the R600, I mean, it's, it's virtually identical. I believe the only difference from looking at it, I mean, this is the R, R600 um, mod module there. That. Well, that way around. Uh, you can see through the holes there, there's an extra coil in this one. So, uh, I believe that's the AM oscillator coil looking at the uh, service manual for it. So, yeah, that's the difference. Not a lot, really. I think you'll find inside they're pretty much identical. But it'd be interesting to see what, what transistors we've got in this one. Now, I'm going to turn this down a little bit now. It's my desoldering tool because. Um, Just got to be really careful with these tabs. So again, the top can is just held in in two places. All right. Finish the rest off with a soldering iron. So what I tend to do is I, I bend one up and then I just slide it out and try not to bend the other one too much. Let's see how we get on with that. Okay, let's get the pliers. Still hanging on. Try to keep the pin, not the board here as well. There we go. Out. So let's pop the can to one side. Let's have a look. Okay. So get you a little bit uh, more central. Let's get you in and have a look at the module. So again we've got another different array of um, <laughs> transistors here. We've got an AF1 Pardon me, 115, an AF116, and another AF116. Um, in my last video, the AF115s were fine, but the 116s were uh, playing up a little bit. I would say this module may well have been worked on in the past. Yeah, 
pretty similar to be honest to the other ones. Um, what I'll do out of experience now is I'm going to change these electrolytics because I did find one uh, dodgy in the last module that I worked on and uh, we'll take these out and see if they're shorted so I'm going to take a picture of the back again but I think it's the same layout so I'm just going to go and get my uh, diagram and just check that out so bear with me. Okay I've just compared the board to my um, my other module and as you can see I took a picture last time I marked out all the positions of the pins and uh, I'm assuming I got them right the last time I'll soon know if I put this one back in and it doesn't work I shall be ripping my hair out but um, yeah pretty much the same board by the looks of it certainly as far as the transistor layout is concerned so bear with me I'm going to pop the transistors out and we'll put them on test to see what they're up to Okay, I've took the first uh, transistor out, which is probably um, the first IF amplifier, possibly. I have got a um, actual layout diagram that somebody on the Vintage Radio Forum did, really good. So uh, I'll get that up in a minute. So basically, what I'm going to do, I've got the my test lead hooked up to the um, shield wire. So I've got my bench multimeter over there, so I'll zoom in on that in a second and um, we'll run through the different pins just to see if we've got any uh, shorts. Well, hopefully you can see this, is a bit of a funny angle. Um, I've got it on the ohms range, set to auto range. Basically between the shield and these other connections we should see no reading at all, so it should stay as OL. So let's go first to the collector, hook that on. Point two two eight kilo ohms, so we've definitely got um, a small connection there, not a lot. Let's try the base next. Okay, again there is a bit of a random connection there. Finally the emitter. Okay, so there definitely is connections there, it's not too bad. That's why the radio is still working, but um, yeah, that one's going to need a zap. So um, I have got AF127s left still. So do I put them in or do I put these back in? I've got some new old stock AF-115s as well. Just out of curiosity, let's um, try a new old stock AF-115. So, where are we? Yeah, no. Focus, focus. Yeah, so we've got some new new old stock AF-115s there. Look. So we just start, I'm going to do the same with this one. Bear in mind this has never been in a radio, let's just see if um, if this one's got a problem as well. So let's connect the shield wire up. So firstly collector. Nothing. Base. Nothing. Emitter or nothing. So that um, that one is allegedly okay. Um, I'm sure it has got tin whiskers growing. But um, what I have found, or I don't know if it's significant or not, it's just a little focus on my hand. Focus. There we go. Is um, if you see the base of that one, see it's like a blue colour. Focus, 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 focus. No. Hopefully you should be able to see that anyway. But um, these ones with the blue, I don't know who manufactured them. There's no manufacturer's mark on it. It just says AF 
115, can you see that? I think it says D13 on there, so uh, as I say, they do seem to be pretty reliable, those. Unusual. Anyway, um, as I say, I may just zap these and put them back yeah. in. So, transistor number two is now out. I'm connected to the shield again, which is connected to the, uh, the tin can that surrounds the transistor. So again, let's go collector first. This is an AF116 now, by the way. Right, okay, well, we've got, <laughs> we've got a short there, 48.9 ohms. That's um, a dead short, but it ain't far off. So base, 0 0.03 mega ohms. And the emitter, Yeah, again, we're still showing um, a little bit of resistance there, 0 0.34 mega ohms. <coughs> so definitely the um, shield and collector, 48.74 ohms. So once again, the AF116 seems to be worse than the 115s, but um, there you go. Anyway. Do you want me to get a minute while I get the last okay, one? Okay, here we are back with the last uh, transistor. This is another AF116. So I'm connected onto the shield. Let's go collector. Yeah, we've got a connection there. 8.3 mega ohms. Base. 8.6 mega ohms, so virtually the same. An emitter. So again, we've we've now got a bad um, shield emitter short. The previous one had a shield collector short. So uh, <laughs> a little bit random how they go. But uh, anyway, there we are. That's all three done. And, uh, and what I'm going to do with these, I'm going to um, zap them and put them back in. I think because so uh, I've got a few. Um, a few R707s, and as I say, it was actually working this radio. And someone did note uh, on the forum that they thought originally, when um, when Roberts were repairing these things, and they went to the AF127 uh, range of transistors, that um, or the 12 range, 12 question mark it was 125, 126, and 127 are virtually the same. That they had to mess about with the emitter um, resistors, so I don't really want to start messing with that, and I don't really know the values, so I'm going to um, stick with the original transistors and just refurbish them. So I'm going to check through the capacitors next before I do that. Bear with me, and uh, I'll get you back in in a second. Okay, that's a recap done. Um, bit of fun and games, but. Um, Nothing, nothing too dramatic. I basically have used my peak meter again. This doesn't show leakage, but it gives you the um, ESR, um, the resistance across them, and uh, also gives you the value of them. So it's a good indicator that something might be amiss if one of these comes up with a strange result. I really could probably do with a capacitance bridge with the, the magic eye in it old school but um, they're just few and far between I can never seem to get one <laughs> I have had my eye out I must um, I must get myself one although I don't know where I'm going to put it mind you anyway so results of the um, the recap so this is basically the old capacitors um, really none of them none of them really weigh out at all uh, 2.2 is reading 2.8, 10 is reading 12.4, another 10, 13.8, another 10, 11, 10, 12.58. Um, the ESR on the 2.2 was very low. Um, as I say, it's a little bit fatter than um, than the other ones. Now, I've put uh, 
where are we? That's the new 2.2 there. So as you can see, this one is a bit chunkier. So whether that one's specifically been put in because it's got a low ESR, I don't know. But the new one's reading about one point something ohms. So I'm not overly worried about that. I don't think that's absolutely crucial. At least I hope not. Um, it's just going out to one of the pins, so it's not going through the transistors. Well, there. So anyway, I have changed them. As I say, really nothing wrong. Could quite easily have uh, just left these in. The thing is, I mean, this radio is what 1970 something. So it's pretty old. At some stage, these are going to break down, and the module will have to come out again. So rather than um, have to get it out again, let's give it a bit of a longer life and uh, change them out. As I say, I popped all the new ones in there, as you can probably see. All nice and neatly re put back in. And uh, no damage underneath, which is always good. Anyway, yeah, I'm now going to um, do some capacitors, uh, no, capacitor, some transistor zapping. So uh, I'm going to put all those transistors across uh, a charged capacitor, and um, hopefully that'll blow all, all the little. Um, <coughs> Excuse me, Tim Whiskers off. So bear with me. I'll set up for that. I'll show you one, and then I'll do them off camera, and um, we'll see the results. Right, I've um, just zapped this one, this transistor. This is the third one I took out that had the um, shield emitter short. So uh, what I've done now, I've connected up. I will show you how, what I did to uh, zap it. Let's get you in front of the white there. Hopefully you can see that. What I've done here is um, I've connected a base collector and emitter together, soldered, and I've soldered the leg of the shield across this capacitor. So uh, hopefully you can see that. I can't really get you in much closer without losing the sharpness, I don't think. Uh, maybe. Maybe you can see that. There we go. So yeah, I've um, got it connected across. Where are you? So now I'm going to hook it up to my power supply again. Say so this part of the process is courtesy of Mark Hennessy. Make sure you get the live neutral the well, positive and negative the right way round <laughs> anyway let's zoom back out again and show you what I'm going to do next so what we want is a heavy screwdriver heavy-ish we'll power that up now hopefully it doesn't go bang on camera Okay, so it's not drawn any current at all. What I'm going to do now is just give it a few taps. Just on the tap while it's connected to the power supply. Hopefully any ones that are like close. That's the idea and I think it's a good one. So thank you Mark for that if you do watch this. Just ensures that any that are near the surface get uh, zapped away as well. Careful you don't touch the wires together because they do uh, give a fair old buzz. <laughs> there we go. So that one should hopefully be uh, all okay. Going to release the uh, power on that one. So I'm going to stick this across my uh, bench multimeter again in a second. So let's just desolder that. Okay, you can see the uh, meter there. So again, I'm on auto range. This one's been zapped and bashed. So 
I'm collected I'm connected up to the shield wire so let's try the collector first no reading there base nothing and the emitter where we had the short absolutely nothing so that one is good to go back in I will put it on my component tester first though just to check that um, there's no issue with the other uh, junctions but yeah that one's good to go join me again in a minute and I will um, just take you through the initial sort of zapping process okay so as you can see let's put a bit of paper behind it might help I've soldered base collector and emitter together to, I mean, it's on the negative side of the capacitor, no matter what side you, you solder it to. So I've just soldered them together in a lump there. And you can see the shield wire is uh, loose. And I've got the other leg of the um, capacitor unconnected. So what I'm going to do now is charge this capacitor up with my uh, bench power supply, which is currently set at 40 volts uh, DC. So charge this one up. Bear in mind your your actual <laughs> tolerance on the ca on the capacitor. This one's rated at 63 volts, so 40 volts is no problem for this one. But uh, if you put a smaller one on with 40 volts, it probably would go pop. You never know. Again, make sure you get the leads the right way around. Um, so all we're doing is connecting the live. So positive and negative together. So make sure we can touch there. Pop the power supply on. Make sure I'm connected the right way around. Yes, I am. So all I'm doing is just touching. I hope. Yeah. So that's just touching that together. There's no spark or anything there. Purely uh, just touching the leads together. So say that capacitor is charged at 40 volts, touching it, there's no drop, there's no current alteration on my bench supply. So that is basically zapped now. So let's just disconnect that one. Just short it out. So yeah, a little spark came off there, so it definitely was charged up done it before and it's not charged up properly and I've gone through the whole process and um, I have to redo it all over again. So anyway, that's pretty much it. Um, I'm just going to connect that one up. Just solder that lead on for the next stage of the process which I've already shown you which is the bashing bit. So just join me again. Well I've got this one connected up to the 40 volts. So I'm just uh, tapping it just to make sure there's no little extra hidden um, whiskers knocking about in there still. And just for information, I'm using a 100 microfarad, 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitor to do this. As I say, um, there's all sorts of methods on the internet of doing them. You can connect them up to a mega, mega tester. Um, loads of different ways. Put a high, much higher voltage through them. They'll take a higher voltage. The higher the voltage, really, I suppose, the better the uh, job will be. Just short that one over. <laughs> Let's get rid of the capacity in that one. Yeah, there we are. So I'm going to put this one back on, on the tester now and hopefully all's good. Okay, yeah. So hopefully you can see the uh, bench multimeter there. Uh, auto ranging on the ohm scale. Currently connected up to the shield. So let's go first of all, as I say, this one had... What did this one have? This one had a shield to collector. Uh, short, so let's go there. Touching that now, let's just touch them together, make sure we're meters working. Yes, it is. So, nothing there. 
Let's try the base. Nothing. And emitter. Absolutely nothing. Again, job done. Okay, that was just one final thing um, before I uh, do put these back in. I've got my um, DC Peak DCA Pro here, component tester. Just going to hook it up. Obviously, don't hook this up to the shield wire because it will just tell you it's a diode because it'll only be testing two of the connections. So, base collector, oh no, he did it then. <laughs> base collector and emitter all joined up, make sure they're not touching. Pop it on test. HFE 104, which is good. Test at 5 milliamps. I think the towers guide tests them at 1 milliamps, so there's probably that's good. Base emitter 3.6, good. A bit right. And leakage 0 0.089 milliamps. Now, the reason I've sort of put this on is uh, one of my other transistors here that I took out, one of the AF116s. Here we go. So you see that's 0 0.089 milliamps leakage current. This one. is showing a bit higher than that, quite a bit higher than all the others actually. So let's test that one. And this one is showing HFE really high, 199. Again base emitter fine, 0.37. Ah, leakage currents changed on it now. <laughs> 0.19, that's strange. So it was higher than that just now, unless it's the other one. Let me just try the uh, other one. Could be, they reckon that that um, figure alters dependent on heat, so it might be I tested it just after I um, unsoldered it from the capacitor. That might be what, what it was. Let's try this last one. And that's a f all three of them. Move that away. So this has got an HFE of 70. A leakage point is 0.033. So yeah, they're all good. HFE is not that brilliant on this, but then uh, it is the one that was in the circuit originally. And I'm sure Roberts, when they um, aligned it, aligned it with that in mind. As I say, I haven't got the gear here to properly align one of these modules. I'm sure well, I probably have, but I certainly haven't got the know-how to uh, rig it all up. So there you are. I just thought I'd show you quickly the um, the HFE figures and the leakages on those. So uh, join me again. I shall put them back in. Get back in with these little tiny short legs. What a nightmare. i got two in so far. Um, last one to go. I've marked them with a date as well. So I'll also put a sticky label somewhere just saying that I've... Um, sort of uh, refurbished the capa the transistors um, March, is it still March? I think it's <laughs> March 2016 so just put 316 on the side of the capacitor just so any any uh, electronics guy going in there in the future will know that um, they've been out at some stage always nice to know that anyway so I'm going to struggle and put this one back in so I thought I'd let you uh, enjoy enjoy my pain and struggle along with me so hopefully you can see this and I'm not out of camera shot let's just um, alter that a little bit I do tend to move about a fair bit let's get you out a little bit so again I'm looking at my diagram here and I'm trying to match up the pinouts, as I say, these are, I know these off by heart now, collector, shield, base and emitter. The um, collector and shield have got a gap between them, a larger gap than the other two. So you can always tell you've got a single wire, then a bank of three. So the uh, single wire on its own is a collector, then you've got shield, base and emitter. So this one is my last one, and that is going down here. So I've got a collector at the top. 
with shield to the left. A little base and emitter pretty close by. This is actually probably one of the easier one to get in. I just need to make sure that when I put it in, as I say, you can't you can't really get your fingers in there at all. So you've got to pretty much line the pins up and hope for the best. As I say, it's uh, it's a fiddle, put it that way. Let's see, I've got. There just is no room between the components. I could pull the components out, I suppose, around it, but again, these are pretty fragile traces on these, so you don't want to be heating them unnecessary. Ah, oh, that's a pig. Let's see if I can bend a few bits out of the way to, to make my life easier. Again, they really do squeeze these components in. So you can see where I'm trying to go there. It's, uh, I could have kept that transistor in this hole here. Pain. So let me have a look again. Just refresh my memory. So I'm collector at the top. Then shield. Emitter and base. Just a dry run from the bottom. I can't do that, can I? Of course I can. Base and emitter. Right, let's try again. So I've gave myself a little bit of room there. Cool. Oh, you've got to love this. So, sorry, zoom back out again because I did zoom in. Let's try this with the forceps. Maybe that's a better way. See why people like valve radios now, they're a damn sight easier to get uh, at than these. Ooh, I'm nearly there. Am I there? Yay! <laughs> there he is, popped in. Hopefully, let's, uh, let's bend these components back in again. But hold him back in place while I uh, solder it up. So I've soldered the others back in, I'll just show you this last one. Again, I'm just putting a little tiny bit of flux on the board just to make sure I've got a nice clean joint. Again, it's old um, old solder on here, so it doesn't hurt. There is flux in, in the um, solder I'm using, it's resin cord, so I will need to clean this off. So no clean flux I'm using, but uh, it's, it's a resin cord or rosin cord solder, so I'm going to have to clean it off as a flux cleaner after. Those of you that watch my other videos will have seen me messing with that before. So you may lose me here when I get my light in the way. Yeah, so I'll, I'll bring you back. Here we are. All done. Just finished soldering that in. So, where are we? We've got one soldered back in this area. Then I've got the second one in here. And the last one is down here. So they're all good. I'm going to check them uh, under the magnifier just to make doubly sure that they're all okay. So the next thing is uh, cleaning up. So for this exercise I'm using um, some flux cleaner and some isopropyl. I did um, used to do it without the isopropyl, but it just it's a real sticky mess it leaves if you don't clean it off with isopropyl afterwards. So well, that's what I found to be the best. For me anyway. So let's get some blue roll. Okay, so first job, flux cleaner. Someone did um, ask me on one of my posts where I got it from, so I did post a link to it on uh, another post earlier. Because I say the brush is really handy. Let's give it a quick squirt to get rid of the 
stuff. I always put some blue roll down as well because uh, you don't want this all over your bench. Just give it a really good scrub. Incidentally, this does get all of <laughs> Robert's flux off as well from many years ago, so God knows what they used. Give it a really good working in everywhere. Yeah, that's suitably done. What we just tend to do is just give it a squirt of um, isopropyl. You can see the muck coming off of it. So uh, there we go. So the next job's on this now, just going to let that dry off, so the isopropyl will um, dry on its own. Then I'm going to solder it back into the can and um, that's that job done. Not too difficult, as I say, it's taking me most of the morning messing about, well not most of the morning but certainly uh, from mid-morning till now, which is what, what we're looking at, 3 o'clock, so it's taking me a good those two, two, three hours. By the time I've zapped all the components as well. So uh, this is not a job for the faint-hearted. You need to take your time with this and allow yourself some time as well. Yeah, that's uh, that's come up quite nice now. So there we go. Join me, and I'll have it all back together. Okay, I'm going to start the painful process in a minute of reinstalling this in the uh, Roberts. So I've soldered back in the um, the board in, into the can here. I've also straightened up these legs with some pliers. And I've written on there that I've um, restored the AF115 and 116s today. So uh, anybody taking this out in the future will see that um, it's been done and the date, which is quite nice to find. Never know, it might be uh, one of my ancestors in years to come. It'll last that long. <laughs> I doubt. So that's that. I'm going to give the switch bank a clean up. Um, and a good wash off. I'm going to give the... Um, the knobs here, I'm going to hit them with some foam cleaner, get them nice and clean, and I'm also going to lubricate them because when they're out, you can actually get in the back of these and lubricate them, which uh, helps them. And let's just get even a little bit closer there. Yeah, so as I say, it lets you squirt um, switch cleaner down in the back of the switches when you've got them out. Normally, it's it's that way up, and it's difficult to get to them rather than other than squirting it down the front of your as you can see it's pretty messy there. So I'm going to use some isopropyl on a cotton bud and just clean all that up as well because that's, I don't know what that is, it's nasty. And uh, then we've got to get this beastie back in. I have got one trace that, um, a couple, that one's not too brilliant. This one's nearly gone but um, Again, it's right next to a fairly substantial switch connection, so that'll be easy to bridge that across. Um, that'll still be fine. So yeah. Oh, not looking forward to this bit now, really, putting all that spaghetti back in. But, you know, fingers crossed, it'll be done. See you soon.